Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Thursday, August 25th, 2022. Jeremy Carrozza will be here. Hope you're having a great uh, evening. Glad you're tuning with us for another edition of Talking Fitchburg. Got a great show planned for you today. A lot of headlines to get you. This morning we had all headlines uh, happening for today. A lot of events happening today. Hopefully the weather held out for the fun at the park, uh, out at Southdale Park. We had uh, the food pantry stopping at Southdale Park today. And we had the farmer's market uh, just finishing up as well. So it was a busy day in Fitchburg. <clears throat> so we hope the weather uh, held out for it uh, as we uh, taped the show earlier. So not sure how it played out, but uh, it's gray for most of the day anyways. Uh, but uh, glad uh, either way to uh, continue on here on uh, this evening with Fitchburg Historical Society. They're taking over today. I'll be interviewing Catherine Schneider. She's going to be talking about the early days of Fitchburg. Yes, early settlement uh, up to uh, where we are today. Well, we'll get a good chunk of it in anyway. So uh, she'll be here with a two-part interview uh, talking about uh, early Fitchburg and some very interesting things uh, coming up. You're going to want to stay tuned uh, because uh, there is some pretty interesting uh, history as it comes for the settlement that was right here in uh, our area of City Hall and the city campus. It had a special name. So stay tuned for that coming up. I don't want to, it's exciting, but I don't want to tell you what it is. So <clears throat> we'll have that for you either way uh, here in a bit. Your headlines, let's get to it. We start with this one. Do you need a, a back to school haircut? Well, got this covered for you. It's happening this weekend. Check this out. Uh, and this is uh, uh, something I just came across here uh, right before I was going to come on air. I was like, man, we got to share this out. And it's from our friends at Briar Patch sharing this uh, out. And uh, it's called the 14th Annual Back to School Free Haircuts. Yeah, and uh, it's hosted by uh, JP Hair Design Incorporated. They're going to have music fun. It's at the Align Energy Center, but you have to uh, sign up for appointment tickets. To get those tickets, you call the number 608-829-1143. 608-829-1143. It's out at the Align Energy Center. Hope you can stop by if you need a free haircut there. Uh, but that's happening uh, this uh, weekend. Uh, if I, let me just back up here and make sure I got that right. That is happening on the 28th. Yes, yeah, Sunday, August uh, 28th. So uh, coming up fast and want to make sure that you know about that. So check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, road construction starts on Syene Road next week. Uh, the city of Fitchburg is planning improvements on Syene Road from Agora Aurora Avenue to McCoy Road. Project concepts include... Uh, there'll be uh, the rural roadways to urban roadways with curb and gutter and storm sewer. The roadway uh, concept includes one vehicle lane and one bicycle lane in each direction with a median in some locations. Intersection improvements at Lacey Road, East Cheryl Parkway, Nine Bark Drive, and McCoy Road. Remaining intersections may include turn left, uh, include turn lanes and will be designed to promote bicycle pedestrian connectivity between the neighborhoods. Stormwater improvements, sanitary sewer, and water main replacement at select locations as well. They'll be starting uh, on this one between uh, Lacey Road and East Cheryl uh, with closer to Lacey Road uh, to get it kicked off but timing out with a uh, quick trip opening there on East Cheryl uh, Drive so we'll uh, keep you up to date on that but that does start on Monday. Board of Review for the City of Fitchburg is scheduled. The Board of Review for the City of Fitchburg and Dane County will meet on the 31st day of August in 2022 at 9 a.m. Anyone wishing to file an objection must contact the City Clerk to complete and submit the required objection form supplied by the City prior Prior to appearing before the Board of Review, objections will be scheduled to be heard by the Board in the order in which they are received by the City Clerk. So if you got and want to file an objection, you can go to our website, FitcherWI.gov and do that or call our clerk's department and they'll get you the information you need. Turning our attention here uh, to volunteer opportunities, uh, Little John's is looking for volunteers on the Meals on Wheels uh, for the evening. That's right. Uh, it says help provide your neighbors with quality meals, volunteer uh, on a once a week, every other week, or as needed basis. Get in for more, get more information. Tongue tied, tied. Oh, I can't even say tongue tied. Come on. Now the website, www.littlejohnskitchen.org. And you can help out with volunteering on those evening meals on wheels. Yeah, good stuff there. And they're doing a great job there at Little John's. 
All right, couple events to tell you about. First one is Midwest Gypsy Swing Fest here in Fitchburg. It's back. The annual Midwest Gypsy Swing Fest will be held at the Art in the Barn, September 16th and 17th. You can access all of the excitement on the MidwestGypsySwingFest.com website or Facebook page. Got a good lineup there, as you can see on your screen. I have not seen any of these, but they sound cool. And uh, yeah, if you want uh, more information on tickets and more, said hit up the website. Uh, this uh, Art at the Barn is located at 5927 Adams Road here in the city of Fitchburg. And uh, yeah, glad to have them back here for another year. And uh, pick me up at the border 2022. We have it, uh, have the scheduled date for you on that. And this is uh, coming up in September as well. It will be held on Friday, September 23rd at 6.30 p.m. And uh, you'll be uh, gathering uh, for the ride at 6.30. It starts at 7. It starts at Sub-Zero Parkway in Fitchburg, 2995 Sub-Zero Parkway. Uh, and uh, the fee is $15 for the registration fee. You also will be going on parts of the uh, state trails there. So riders are responsible for their own straight state trail passes and what are we talking about here well there's three options for riding you got the 25 mile ride to belleville the 50 mile ride to monticello or for you adventurous folk 80 mile ride to the illinois state line and back all gravel dirt trail bike ride beginning at nightfall and some of the times they have run into uh some uh tough weather there so hopefully the weather holds out for them all right that does it for our headlines coming up next we open up the digest and our guest segment with the fitchburg historical society talking about early settlement next right here on tf Considerando el número de desastres naturales que ocurren en los Estados Unidos, es probable que en la próxima década todas las regiones tengan que lidiar con alguna clase de emergencia. Entre la escuela, los deportes y la vida social, es probable que cuando suceda usted no esté con sus hijos. ¿Saben ellos qué hacer? Listo.gov Diagonal Niños tiene información y herramientas educativas para facilitar esta conversación. Cuando llegue el momento, se sentirán preparados y no asustados. Así que hable con su familia hoy mismo. Nada más así que no le cuento todo y sobre de encajar, siento como que me va a decir que es una ridiculez. Puedo in, uh, entender eso completamente. aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. After you joined our family, it was like, I really do feel complete now. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Joining today for the Fitchburg Historical Society. Actually, she's my co-host because she's been running some great interviews with the Fitchburg Historical Society. It's Catherine Schneider. Catherine, welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm doing great. You know, I think you do a really good job, first off, with, with the interviews that you've done. Like, you have taken over uh, the, the Historical Society's piece here when we get together on Talking Fitchburg. So... I feel pretty honored that I get to, you know, run an interview with you today because, I mean, you've been you've been knocking it out of the park with all your uh, recent interviews, and we're talking about a fun topic today: uh, early settlements uh, uh, and development uh, in Fitchburg. Which I've heard stories, I've heard some things uh, throughout. So I'm hoping to connect some of the dots today between uh, the, the different guests that we've had on over the years. Um, but uh, there's some interesting pieces here that kind of make or break the settlement of Fitchburg. Am I correct? Oh, you bet. You bet. So Fitchburg, Fitchburg really has had a very interesting history, and we want to highlight that through the next few months. Um, but today, I'd like to take people way back in Fitchburg history, early history. Um, first of all, to acknowledge the first humans, of course, were our Native Americans, and they left a pretty light footprint, actually. Um, 
would have been um, some of the Indian early uh, Native American trails would have been uh, uh, running north and south, like where Seminole Highway is now and where uh, Fish Hatchery Road are, early, early trails um, that actually have become major, major roads through Fitchburg uh, today. Um, so the, um, the Winnebago, uh, we now would say Ho-Chunk um, uh, tribe was prominent in Fitchburg and would, you know, make camp by where there would be water, principally. That makes absolute sense for fishing and hunting. Um, so I wanted to acknowledge that first. Um, the um, farming pioneers started coming in the 1840s and found beautiful land here in Fitchburg. Um, in fact, one of the early pioneers was uh, William Broman, and he has a description of, um, of Fitchburg, what it looked like when, when these far uh, early farmers came. Um, and he said, um, he said he described Fitchburg as one of the best agricultural towns in the county. The soil is very rich and climate healthy. So obviously he loved, he loved what he saw when he came here. Um, so the pioneers, uh, began arriving in pretty great numbers then uh, along 1840s through 1860s, purchasing land from the government. Um, and uh, wheat was really their first crop that they, that they grew here. Um, but interestingly enough, over the years, you might think of those early years as being primarily agriculture in Fitchburg, and they were, but there were also um, uh, a village and several settlements in, in the boundaries of Fitchburg um, in those early years. So when we look back from 2022, it's kind of amazing to think about all that was here very early on, actually. So um, in the last half of the 1800s and the first years of the 20th century, uh, Fitchburg actually had, get this, five post offices, 12 schools, uh, three churches, and lots of taverns and, and stores and businesses. So I'd like to talk about um, where those places were located and you know, why they came to be and why they were important. Um, I think the first thing to think about is like transportation through Fitchburg. So early days, um, it was stagecoach, you know, stagecoach stops through Fitchburg going to other places or, or uh, serving the people within Fitchburg the farming community. So there were three community centers in those early days from the 1840s through say about the 1870s. Oak Hall was, um, was probably the most prominent and that was located at the corner of um, Highway M and Fish Hatchery Road. So you can kind of see where that would be a major crossroads. Um, so stagecoaches would stop there to get water for their oxen and their horses. And then of course, find a place uh, to sleep and get nourishment, food for the night. Sort of like a modern B&B. Um, <laughs> and so mail and passengers went through there. Um, and interestingly enough, from Madison, uh, from that location to Madison was just a nice, easy half day's journey. So <laughs> it was an easy stop over there. Um, and then people would travel like to Mount Vernon and places south um, from that location too. Um, so they had there a post office and a blacksmith shop. And get this, they would have bands that would come in as, from as far away as Evansville to entertain people because they had, you know, dancing and entertainment for the farming community. So definitely a major community center in Fitchburg in those early years. Um, another um, community center, or we would call it maybe a settlement, was um, Lakeview, and that was another stagecoach stop. Lakeview is located in the eastern part of Fitchburg. That's at the, the intersection of MM and B. Um, so it's really on the way to Oregon to the south and then Madison to the north. Um, so around 1860, so if you can picture this 150 <laughs> plus years ago, they had a hotel and a tavern, um, shoemaker shop, post office, um, blacksmith shop, and a general store. Um, and also a dance hall. So, you know, where would people go to go for dances? Um, to Lakeview. Uh, so very, um, very, uh, again, for Eastern uh, Fitchburg, a very prominent place settlement. Um, and then the third settlement during the stagecoach era was called 
get ready for this, Dogtown. <laughs> <laughs> Dogtown was at the intersection of Fish Hatchery and Lacey Road, kind of at the same intersection where now City Hall is and the library. So you can see where they would have a stagecoach stop there also. Um, so that had a meat market, a blacksmith shop, general store, and, um, and Dogtown School. It was Fish Hatchery School, but also they was fondly known as Dogtown School too. Um, so there's a couple of stories about why it was called Dogtown. Um, one story has it that because there were so many um, prairie dogs in Fitchburg, obviously being a prairie, um, that uh, Dogtown, Prairie Dogtown, was the name of that area. Another story is with the meat market, that they used to throw the bones out the back door, and so the dogs would gather to uh, get a treat. <laughs> so a couple stories about the origin of that name, Dogtown. All right, we are going to take a quick break. We will have more with Catherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society on Fitchburg's early settlement next right here on TF. See on page four that the projections need to be blood next Thursday. Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have prediabetes, a serious medical condition that puts you at high risk for type 2 diabetes. One in three American adults has prediabetes, but more than 80% don't know they have it. The good news is, prediabetes can be reversed, and for many people, healthy changes in their daily routine can make a big difference. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Well, welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. We're going to continue our interview with Catherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society as she continues to tell us about the early settlement here in Fitchburg. So the next uh, uh, major uh, change in Fitchburg as far as... Um, uh, creating a new communities was the railroad era. Stagecoaches dropped by the wayside as the railroads came in with much more efficient, uh, faster means of communication. Um, they could provide farmers with just uh, um, an added access to the markets uh, for their wheat and their dairy products and their livestock. Um, so there were two major rail lines that came through uh, Fitchburg in the 18, late 1800s. One was uh, uh, the, um, the Chicago and Northwestern uh, rail line that came through uh, Eastern Fitchburg. And that was located, that depot was located at a depot at Syene. Um, and then the second one was the Illinois Central, which interestingly enough came through the center part of Fitchburg. Um, and at the Syene station uh, in the Northeast part of Fitchburg, um, that was really a center for commerce from about late 1800s to about 1926. Um, so you could go north to Madison and then southbound too, as far as Chicago. Um, they had a post office, grocery store, creamery, stockyard, and blacksmith shot, shop. So all those things were located there. Um, they also had, the Syene community had um, Swan Creek Methodist Church, and they also had Swan 
Creek School located close to the church. So there was a lot happening in that, uh, around that Syene Station location. Um, then there was the first, like we would call Fitchburg Village. And that was brought about also by the railroad. Uh, in 1887, the Illinois Central ran a line through, through the center of Fitchburg running from Madison to Freeport, Illinois. And they brought mail and baggage service, um, passenger service, passenger service, <laughs> and, uh, and freight trains, of course, to carry goods. Um, so that was a new center for trade um, in Fitchburg. And the depot station was located at Fitchburg Village on Went Road. So that's in the southern part of Fitchburg, uh, just about to Highway M, intersecting with Highway M. And that's where the um, Badger bike trail is now runs right through there. Um, so the small village that grew up around that depot um, was um, larger than the Syene settlement. And so it had a grocery store, post office, blacksmith shop, Lutheran church, Lapley Brothers feed mill, lumber and coal yard, and implement, implement dealership, all located right there in Fitchburg village. Um, there was a secondary uh, station milk station located pickup where the milk, uh, farmer's milk could be picked up on Stoner's Prairie, which was right near Lacey Road. So not just the farmer's milk was picked up there, but you could also catch the train as a, as a passenger if you wanted to go into Madison or Point South. Um, so mass transit was pretty readily available in Fitchburg at that time in several locations. Um, so the Illinois uh, Central um, uh, Station closed in Fitchburg Village in uh, about 1926. And uh, so the settlement declined at that time. And the mural on the second floor of the library depicts that village in the early uh, 1900s. So it's fun when you go into the library to look at that and picture how that village would have looked at that time. Well, of course, um, the railroad business then declined when automobiles came in and trucking and so on. Um, so that was in the 1920s. Um, but I'd just like to say, as I stop today at that point in Fitchburg's history, that um, there was a lot happening in terms of these settlements of goods going in and out of Fitchburg, people going in and out of Fitchburg it was really um, a connector. These these settlements, these um, railroad depots, um, a lot was happening in Fitchburg. It was not an isolated community. Um, so I think that realizing that even early on, Fitchburg had a lot a lot going on. So that's the story of early, uh, just a brief <laughs> a brief brushstroke of early Fitchburg, Jeremy. <clears throat> First off, the mural at the and the second part of the library showing the road location with the train depot and everything. You're right. That puts you in the mindset of of what that was like, you know, uh, in there. And I like the the fact that the villages. You really can follow that today when you're talking about Syene Road, when you're talking about Seminole Highway, taking the bike path, and uh, there's some signage out there that uh, talks about some of the stuff here uh, that you're referencing. But I like that all of them had a blacksmith. I like, like all of them had uh, at some type of store, tavern. And the hall thing is very interesting to me. I think that that it, it's just fun, fun, something fun uh, uh, to talk about. And uh, something I would love to explore a little bit more on is uh, what was happening uh, at the halls, the weddings, the, the events, if you will. And, and then, yeah, the development uh, continued. And it's crazy when you think of how fast things have changed over the years, too. It doesn't well, seem yeah. fast when you're playing, when you're talking out, but when you really think about it, you know, the horse, the stagecoach thing, wasn't that, far, that wasn't that long ago. And here we are in, in a different age, you know, not sure what the next direction, where's my flying car that comes out of Fitchburg? <laughs> well, I think, and I think those means of transportation made a huge difference in how Fitchburg developed. You can see those settlements move from one location to another, depending, depending on what was going on uh, in terms of transportation and how important that was. And also the central uh, place of uh, gathering for community also that that comes through loud and clear that people want to gather together. Um, so not only transportation in and out of Fitchburg, but forming community and being together. Um, all of that is part of being human. 
It is. And I will also, from here on out, it will no longer be the city campus, but Dogtown here on, <laughs> uh, on our city campus. So it's been designated by said Jeremy Crosby, a pioneer in his own right, because of Catherine Schneider and the Fitchburg Historical Society. Catherine, great information. We'll check back in with you next month and continue the discussions from there. Appreciate your time. And uh, people want to learn more about the Historical Society and all the great work you guys are doing. How can they find out? Oh, Fitchburg Historical Society. We are housed in the Fitchburg Library, uh, Dogtown Corner there, intersection. <laughs> Fitchburg Library. We're on the second floor. Um, people can locate us. Uh, really, our website is is uh, readily available to anyone through computer, and that's fitchburghistory.org. So please feel free to contact us um, anytime. We love uh, taking questions, um, hearing comments, and uh, we'll just be continuing this uh, series on on the development of Fitchburg so more to come I want my Dogtown t-shirt by the next time or mug by the next time uh, we uh, meet up so uh, make that happen Catherine okay all right Jeremy <laughs> all right as Catherine said check out the website if you haven't or stop by on the second floor of the Fitchburg Public Library and check out the historical societies uh, set up there it's awesome we'll take a quick break more to come you're watching Talking Fitchburg from Dogtown como padre Todos los días son un desafío y hay que estar ahí presentes. Hay que, no importa lo cansado que uno esté, hay que estar ahí presentes para ellos. Cuando los niños aprenden algo nuevo, es ese momento mágico y especial. Y creo que presenciar eso es ese momento es mi favorito. The central and midwestern U.S. averages more than 850 tornadoes each year. And lately, the number of floods has been rising in the region, too. So chances are, there will be more twisters and floods near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are, you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are, they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. Keys down, Kevin. But I'm gonna drive home. There are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. I guess I have really been looking for love in this dating app. Yep, I'm definitely gonna call a ride home. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Wrapping up the show for today, I want to thank Catherine Schneider from the Fitchburg Historical Society sharing some great information on the early settlement. We'll continue our conversations uh, next time uh, she joins us. But very interesting stuff. And you got to like that the, this was known as a dog area. I mean, I mean, what's cooler than that? Just saying. But uh, thank you for the history there. And I think it's also cool, too, that a lot of our main routes still are the, the routes that were used, you know, way back when in the early settlement. So also kind of fascinating. If you want to learn more about anything that she had talked about, go to their website. They got some great information there. And if you haven't stopped up to see the mural and uh, the Historical Society's uh, spot in the library, you should do so. Till next time, have a great evening, everybody.